Let me tell you, one of my least favorite things about being a dad is when my kids ask me questions over and over and over and over and over and over. It's like, dude, chill on the questions. Like I, I the other day, well, I guess it was over break, like Mallory wanted to watch the movie Wonder. Like she'd seen it in uh, her class, had read the book at school and then they watched the movie and she was like, oh, it's so great. And we're like, great, cool, we'd love to watch that. But it wasn't the right time. But she kept asking like over and over and over. And here's the deal. I actually really liked the movie. Really great. But like the questions like, hey, you know what we should watch right now? We should watch Wonder. Like, bro, come on. Here's the thing. In Luke chapter 19, Jesus shows back up in Jerusalem, right? And he comes into the city riding on this donkey and people have palm leaves spread out all over the ground and then they, they cheer and they yell, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And Jesus arrives like a king into Jerusalem. And when that happens, the Pharisees lose their minds and they start to ask questions of Jesus over and over and over. They ask all these questions. Like Jesus goes into the temple and he sees this, um, th these tables set up and they've got money changers and people selling sacrifices and all this other stuff. And Jesus um, like tears it up. He's like, this is not what the temple is supposed to be. This is not what my father's house is supposed to be. And he drives all of them out and he gets rid of it all. And the Pharisees, instead of going, you know what, Jesus was totally right, they go, well, who gave you the authority to do that? Like, dude, you should have been the ones to do it. But they ask the question. Um, then they question Jesus about taxes. Like, they're just trying to irritate him now. They're trying to trip him up. They're trying to find a way to get rid of him. And so they're like, so... Should you pay taxes or not? And Jesus says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. And they're like, oh, foiled again. They ask him another question, this really crazy question about, um, about marriage and uh, at the resurrection. Like, like is there, um, will, if you marry, if there's this woman who married this guy and then, then he died, and then she married his brother, which was totally what they would do back in the day. And then he dies, and then like seven brothers later, like she dies. Um, like seriously, this woman is totally bad luck if she's married seven times and all seven of them die, right? Um, but the question was, whose wife will she be at the resurrection? And <laughs> look at what he says in Luke chapter 20, verse 34. Jesus replied, the people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they can no longer die, for they are like angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. But in the account of the burning bush, even Moses showed that the dead rise, for he calls the Lord the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. Mic drop. Like, he's like, you guys are asking the wrong questions. Like, why don't you ask me a question about something that really matters? And, and, and so, all this stuff happens after Jesus comes into the city, but check out what happens in this last part. Actually, it's here in 20, chapter 21. Starting in verse 1, it says, As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich. He's in the, let me back up. He's in the temple and he's watching people. He's like people watching in the temple. Sounds great. You remember people watching? It was always pretty fun. Verse 1, As Jesus looked up, he saw the rich putting their gifts into the temple treasury. He also saw a poor widow put in two very small copper coins. Truly I tell you, he said, this poor widow has put in more 
than all the others. All these people gave their gifts out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty, or, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on. So out of all these things that have happened, Jesus comes in with this big hurrah, and then all these Pharisees keep asking questions like trying to trap him and get under his skin and like get him removed from the situation. He, he answers them all and then sees this happen. These other people are asking questions, trying to find a way to keep what they have and what they want. They're trying to hold on to the way that things have been because the way things have been, it's really benefited them. It's, it's been uh, really, really to their, to their advantage to keep things the way that they have always been. And so they're trying to hold on to that. Um, they're trying to find a way to keep what they have and what they want. But then you have this woman in total opposition of that who looks at what she has, which is two coins, like nothing. And she takes all of that and gives it. And Jesus says, he says, surely I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. They're like, Jesus, what are you talking about? Because she gave all that she had. There, she's not, there's, there's nothing else. She doesn't have a savings account. She doesn't have a 401k. She doesn't have investments. Like, she has two small copper coins and she takes those two small copper coins and she drops them into the treasury knowing that that's all she has. And on the other side of this are these people just dropping in all this cash, these bucketfuls of coins so that people can see them and see how wonderful they are. And this woman just kind of meekly goes in and drops the coins in the bucket. What a dichotomy here. This story uh, with all of the questioning and all of that stuff that has happened. Jesus says, this woman's given more because she gave what she had, not out of her wealth. She gave it all. And all these people asking these questions had been trying to hold on to the past and hold on the way things were, when in reality, it was time to just give it all up. It was time to give it all. To, to not hold on to the past anymore, but to um, embrace the future. I mean, we have a really hard time with doing that. I'm, I'm not trying to dog on those guys because we do that same type of junk all the time. Like we try to hang on to the way things were. I, I keep holding on to the way things were before COVID. They will never be the same, period. They will never be the same. It can't happen. I've got to let it go like Elsa and I've got to embrace the future of what the world will look like. And it will not look the same. It won't, it can't. We will always be changed and always be different. And I think that's the point. When Jesus is answering all these questions, it's like he's saying, the writing's on the wall, guys. This, we're going to have to move on. You're going to have to move past this. The question is, will you? The question is, will you? I don't like moving on, just like you don't like moving on. But it's time. It's time for us to let go of the past, to give God all we have, and to let him lead us in our future. You know, this past Wednesday night, we all worshiped together at Tonight the Show, and, uh, and we sang Oceans, and it says, Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. It's time for us to let go of the past and embrace the future, knowing that God will lead us and God will take us to where we need to be. And so my hope and my prayer for you this week is that you will be someone who latches on to the future that God has in store for you, that you will leave the questioning behind, stop grasping for the past, and instead hold tight to, uh, to the Spirit that He may lead you towards where you need to be. I hope you have a great week. I hope you, um, you enjoy it, and I hope you live life to the fullest in Christ. I'll see you next week.